and welcome back to Mighty MM Cast or Cast. That was good. That was decent. We've done better. We've done worse. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We are going to be playing a few hours of Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, uh, jumping into a campaign that we've been going for almost a year now, which is really awesome. Um, so yeah, let's jump in it. Uh, who remembers what happened last time? I did the last a really rough fight with the hag and her oh, minions. Yeah. <sighs> really, really rough. And I think that was most of what we did at that point. Yeah. We came across a clearing where a tree had been felled and we all realized that something was wrong about that situation, especially with what we'd been experiencing so far. Uh, and they kicked our butts, but thanks to some quick thinking, um, especially with Kaim distracting their like big bad boss guy and with uh, Rook being strategic about trying to take the hag specifically, um, we got some good some good action and it ended up surviving even though most of us went down or went to like no hit points. Yep. So uh, uh, I was one death thing away from death. From actual <laughs> death. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you, you hit the nail on the head. It's, a few days ago, um, you guys encountered a night hag and some of her minions. She fled um, and left her minions to take care of you. But through some quick thinking from uh, most of the party, uh, you convinced her, her minions not to fight you and converted them and saved a few children. Um, she didn't like that. So she used the... Um, items that you took from her house to track you and slowly infest herself into the mind of Rook and of um, Mazarin, thank you, um, not allowing you any restful sleep. Uh, after a few days of this, there was the encounter, uh, which she fought you with a few more from minions, and it was one of the hardest fought battles that you guys have encountered thus far. Um, kind of barely scraping by with uh, a key use of banishment, banishing the night hag back to her own dimension. Um, and that is where we will pick up. Uh, you guys are licking your wounds after the battle. I do have to say a, a classic Rook line. I am almost at half hit points. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I think it was because I got healed at the end of last round. <laughs> and I get to respond with, I have eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling next to Rook, trying to make him comfortable. Uh, how that long worked. are we traveling when we got, can we camp? Like, is that? Yeah, it's about midday right now. Uh, using the, the horse strategy that you guys came up with where Kaim uh, trends our beast shapes into a, a horse and um, Gimbal casts uh, tensors floating discs while on the back of Kaim. Um, that cutcher traveled drastically. Uh, so I would say it's about midday right now. It, it'll take about a day for you guys to make it to Squall's End, um, as long as there's uh, you don't get lost or anything like that. So you could make camp right now and uh, see to it next day. Well, if it's midday, I vote that we take a short rest and then try and finish out the day traveling. I agree. That's fair. I don't want to set up camp right where we left the night hag. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's sense. asking for it. <laughs> awesome. Um, are we doing the same? Do you have any more wild shape charges left? Is Does those recover on a short rest? Mm -hmm. They do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, after, after you guys uh, travel a bit away from the, the attack site, um, uh, as well as do you guys uh, loot any of the bodies or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and roll investigation, whoever is. They were very mean to us. I think we deserve some stuff out of these bodies. 19. 19. Uh, oh, 27. Ooh, nice. nice. I'm going to try just looting the body of the, the big one that I tried to cast Dominate Beast on. Okay. Of course, now I'm worried that if I take anything from them, she'll be able to track us again. I mean, that is a concern. That is the trap. I got a six. Six. Um, 
you don't find much. Um, these are just gnolls. I mean, your people have fought these gnolls since you were little, and there's not much that can interest you here. Um, da or Mazarin, you find uh, 50 gold uh, on two of the bodies. Um, you find a uh, kind of worn half plate, um, nothing too outstanding, a few spears. Um, Gimbal, you find uh, half plate as well on yours. Uh, it's an enchanted half plate. Um, it is. Uh, it's resistant to fire. Um, and the cleaver that he was using, the kind of great cleaver, um, has a, a plus two enchantment on it, but um, is very heavy. Um, Should I risk using this armor again? Because like last time it screwed us over so bad. <laughs> I would tell everyone that I found this money are we keeping this or are we afraid that this is going to be trackable? I don't even know at this point. Um, Gimbal, you know that the use of the scry spell is stronger if there's items that you possess that uh, the person knows about, but also you can be scryed on anyways, no matter what, no matter what as long as the person knows of you. Um, make an arcana check. Um, that is 23. Sending a night hag back to her plane, the, back to the, um, nine hells. It, it is in their culture punished harshly. Um, and it, it's going to take her some time to gain the resources to come back to this plane. Um, so you get the feeling using that spell and concentrating on it for 10 minutes like you did. Uh, she is officially back in her home plane and she has to start the process over again to try and get back, which could take a long time. Or if she has a lot of resources, could be tomorrow. Well, um, hold a grudge. <laughs> yes uh they do um hags in general hold a grudge um we're screwed <laughs> with your with that arcana check you know that they hags like this and you overheard her talking about her coven uh you you know typically sh she is probably working with two maybe more uh hags and they work together begrudgingly so it's safe to say that even if it was just her that showed up, maybe the other hags weren't invested in this fight. So that could be another kind of arrow in your quiver. Wouldn't I mean, I think be, that it's... I'm going to put the armor on, so... <laughs> Do you want the cleaver? Uh, awkwardly, I, I don't use weapons, Gimbal. I don't think anybody else can use it, so I guess we can just leave that. <laughs> Um, I are we all... over all the gold to Gimbal. Okay. Can start recouping our clothing fund. <laughs> uh, and also on his body, you see uh, another hundred gold just for from his pouch, from the big guy's pouch. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Well, um, we're not quite where we were hoping to be financially at this point, but we've all made some bad choices and I think that we're definitely moving in the right direction. Um, so after a rest, let's see what we can cover today. I'd like to sleep under Wait. a roof. Do we have enough finances to still go visit the island? It kind of depends on how much it costs to get home. Um, but beyond that, we'll we'll figure it out. How much did you guys spend on those clothes? <laughs> well, we still have them, so we can try and recoup some of that money in Osrin. We can How much market did them you as spend, delicacies from beyond the walls. <laughs> me, and da me and Dash spent like 25 gold pieces on our clothes. <laughs> I We got a little overboard there. Well, 
hopefully it's not expensive to get home. Hopefully it'll be less than the 600 gold we spent on those clothes. Six hundred. <laughs> Dash or Mazarin like slowly backs away. That would have been um, guild dues. That would have been guild dues for like the entire party. <laughs> oh, I can also. I just realized to have arcane recovery. Nice. <laughs> so as you guys venture a, a little further away from the the scene of the battle, um, take a short rest, uh, lick your wounds for for all those who took a lot of damage. Um, uh, from here, you can definitely set out, or if you wanted to do anything else while resting. Uh, I mean, I want to get to the end of the night. I'm exhausted. Okay. So doing the same strategy, we have Kaim turning into his uh, riding horse. Uh, Gimbal's sitting on the back. Who is on the back with Gimbal? If he would let me, I would be, but I don't know if he will. We'll just have Dream do it. Okay. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm amenable to whatever will get us there the fastest. It's probably Mazarin on the back of the horse then since he's doing the survival checks. All right, both of you saddle up on on Zakame, Kaim. And uh, yeah, you're off. Uh, Let's go ahead and get a survival check from you, uh, Mazarin. Uh, With disadvantage, 14. 14? Okay, yeah, that's that's enough. as you're getting closer to the city, you're still uh, about a day's travel out, but as you're getting closer to the city, you're seeing uh, trails, more kind of um, uh, obvious trails. Before you were following game trails, but these are actually trod by people, it, it seems like. Uh, so it's getting easier and easier to find your way to Squall's End. Um, so yeah, you, you travel half a day, um, so you have uh, probably about four or five hours left to get to uh, Squall's End, but it's uh, about uh, sunset. I think we should rest. Yeah. Hey, Nate. A hearty day. I'm, thank you again for doing this. I know that it's, it's a, been a lot to ask from somebody that we just met, but we really do appreciate all of your help. Thank you. I neigh again, and then I do the horse, like, lay down so that everybody can hop off easily. (laughs) It's especially helpful when you're... Such a nice mount. Three foot six. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, you guys gather supplies for a fire. Um, You kind of clear out a little clearing for your campsite. I'm assuming you're doing the double dome strategy. I can druid form, I cast. Okay. Bomb of the summer court. Yep, you it's see a that. Dim a dome, double dome. <laughs> you see that uh, same uh, light, uh, green energy uh, go out and then turn translucent. And then uh, Gimbal casts his magic and a second dome appears mm-hmm. um, comfortably uh, sitting in the center, have a fire going. Uh, Rook, are you cooking anything? Uh, not tonight. No. Okay. Unless yeah. we can see that. No, because the demon dog would have disappeared, so never mm-hmm. mind. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys eat the your some of rations, some leftovers from last night, um, and get ready to go to bed. Anyone doing anything before that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. As you lay down, uh, who's taking watch? Dream, okay. <laughs> the classic dream watch. Exhaustion. Dream, dream, Mazarin, Arno. I've got exhaustion, so. Okay. Um, yeah, as everyone lays down to sleep, dream, you're watching uh, to see what's going on, to see if there's another attack, to see if maybe Gimbal's spell didn't work and the hag's coming back. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Um, You see rustling in the bushes, maybe 40 feet ahead of you. Um, 
as you kind of settle down uh, and uh, prepare to cast a spell, you see a deer pop out uh, and it kind of looks around, walks forward a little bit, starts eating some grass and you see kind of other babies behind it. Um, being the first wildlife you've seen since you've entered the wolf's pine, um, things are starting to go back to normal. Eldritch Blast, we need dinner tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it grows fangs. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very bad at this. I can still hear. Oh, no. no. Mazarin, we need you. So he said he can still hear us. Okay. So, Mazarin, as you go down to sleep, um, or meditate, not sleep, you're transported again to um, this familiar place. But this, this time, instead of um, obsidian black bricks, you see light green and blue and yellows and, and bright colors. Um, as you come fully conscious, uh, you're, you're sat in this ornate uh, ebony wood uh, kind of knotted chair, um, really fanciful surroundings around you. Um, and as your focus uh, accumulates and you look forward, you see the same figure a figure that's tormented you for years, uh, sitting, smiling, glass in her hand. Uh, would you like some tea, dear? Uh, no, thank you. Suit yourself. So I've been watching you, and I understand that you don't intend to return to me. And I imagine you'll be able to convince Dash that no one should return to me. But I want you to know. I want you to be assured that in the end, someone will take your place. Whether it be you or Dash or maybe some of these new friends you have, I will have someone in my chambers. So the choice is yours. Okay. Have you anything to say? No. Well, enjoy it. Uh, please have some tea, have some snacks. Um, I won't be very amenable for long, so... Uh, I hope to see you soon. If not, maybe I'll see some of your friends. Maybe a double course. Um, only face no. And she sits back, stares at you while she's sipping her tea for a very long, awkward moment. <laughs> I stare right back. And after what feels like hours, she looks at her wrist, absent of a clock. Well... It's about time that you go back now, shushu, and then you come awake uh, in the campsite. Uh, is anyone else up besides Dream? Uh, you took you know the first four hours you took to sleep, so or meditate, so everyone okay. else would be sleeping still. Okay. Um, I think I would tell Dream at this point. Okay. Deer still there? Uh, no, the the deer left. Uh, yeah, maybe an hour ago. There was a deer. Was there? That's. I mean, that's good, right? We haven't seen many animals around. That means maybe we didn't break the forest. I hope not. And perhaps Kaim's presence. Oh, true. Um, I had another dream. I figured I should tell someone. What happened? Uh, the fairy queen who, or fae queen who kidnapped me, 
took me to this really beautiful castle and asked me if I wanted tea and was actually kind of nice to me, which was weird. Um, and then said that she knows that I'm running and that one way or another, she's either going to have me or Dash or someone close to me for her plaything, basically. It is always the way with evil. They always threaten your friends. Yeah. It's almost like it's not worth it to have friends, so you can't get hurt. I can see why you would think that. I often have thought of leaving my family because I couldn't bear it if something happened to them. But then evil wins anyway. If I isolate myself and don't live to my fullest potential, I can't have them. True. What are you going to do about her? Um, I think all I can do right now is run and get stronger so that when I do have to face her, I can beat her. Is there a way we can protect ourselves? Not that I know of. I mean, you're probably in danger just being with me, but I know you want to find Dash. We have a lot to do. We can't hide. I know. I'm not asking you to. But thank you. Always. Friend. Oh. Did we lose Rio? Did. And we also fulfilled um, Mazrin's short term aspiration. Yeah. <laughs> I made a friend. Get a friends, real friend. Man. You got a beat, which you can't really use in D&D. &D. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should we just wait for him to come back and then pick up um, again? Yeah. I Can you imagine? Him, and I said, we lost you. And he said, yeah. So I don't know if he's okay. <laughs> Can you imagine if D and D was based on beats for leveling up? I would be super down for that, actually. I, I think that I would don't know. Too. encourage a lot more role play. Yeah, yeah. Also, I just realized, Coulter, we never talked about like how your Zoom is set up when you're recording. I have you guys on the side like this, and the map like big. I have you guys as a grid, and the map on my second monitor. I think either way, you could probably pull from it, right? Yeah. In yeah. The video. I think you're still just pulling the files. It's however you. As long as you said the video. Hmm. And it's sorry for disappearing a moment ago there. A Cooper like lost his mind and was barking up a storm in the bedroom. So I was like, oh, great. Is somebody breaking into the house now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I went just, and checked and there's like nobody there. Just Cooper sitting on the bed. That's when I ran off. There was this weird beeping noise coming from my bedroom. And I was like, is the AC blowing up or what? Yeah. It's ghosts, both of them. It's apparently just a day. Is Rio okay? I'm going to pause the recording. Recording resumed. <clears throat> so as you guys have your conversation, uh, Mazarin and Dream, um, finishing up and just kind of looking into the horizon as you see the sun rise over. Um, and it, it's, it's a beautiful sunrise uh, because of the fact that the, the sun, as it streams through this um, first layer of your double dome setup, um, you see kind of a, a whole rainbow of colors come through. Um, it's, it's really beautiful for about 30 minutes until the sun goes across the horizon. Um, and at that point, everyone's waking up. Do I lose a level of exhaustion? Uh, yeah, you got a full night's rest. Rio, you also did too, so you lose one level of exhaustion. Thank the Lord. 
All right. Um, are you telling anyone else about the dream? Did you have? Did you have a level of exhaustion? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I would tell everyone else about it too. So who's next? What do you mean? Well, you swap Dash's freedom from your own. Which of us is next? I couldn't tell you. It sounds like it's possibly your choice. Well, this sounds ominous. Uh, I don't know if I like this too much. She offered you a trade and we know what decision you made last time. So if you decide to make that decision again, I think that it would be kinder of you to give us warning before you sold one of us. I don't intend to sell anyone, Gimbal. I said what I said. I would just appreciate warning. And I'm saying what I'm saying that I would never do that. Well, you already you already have done it once. But we only have half a day's travel left, so it's probably best if we get moving. Probably. All right. You all uh, take the positions, clean up the camp as best you can, um, doing the same uh, horse-drawn strategy. Um, I will need another survival roll from Mazarin. Uh, 19. 19, yeah. At this point, you know exactly where you're going. Um, you see, uh, as you get closer, um, uh, this uh, kind of less used trail converges into a larger trail. Um, uh, taking that trail down, that dirt plain trail turns into cobblestone. Um, and then the cobblestone itself turns into nicer cobblestone that's kind of dusted off and, and dirt free. Uh, as you as you come to the city of Squall's End, do you want to zoom out the map? Wow. It appears more well appointed than our last hmm. visit in Sutton. This is the main or one of the main trade routes of um, the land beyond the Titan's Gates. Um, you know from your talks with um, Barrick and people in Sutton that all of the items, all of the material, everything that's mined from Dagledorm Keep comes through here to be sold. Um, you can see towards the uh, left of the map here, uh, kind of a, a slurry that allows uh, ships to come in, get checked by the guards, and enter into the river, or vice versa, come from the river out into the, the main ocean. Um, that's really the only thing you see locked down. You see the, the, gates to, the main gates to the city wide open, a uh, few guards patrolling it, but it seems that this sprawling city welcomes any newcomers. So uh, you head through, uh, head down the main uh, road into the city, uh, heading through the gates. You see uh, there's kind of a small crowd uh, piling through the gates themselves um, as uh, four guards, two flanking on each side of the gate, uh, welcome everybody in with smiles on their faces. Um, and as you enter the city, you see you, you're greeted with tall peaks, uh, tall, long buildings that come to points all around. Um, this first section of the city is, is pretty uniform in the buildings, uh, <clears throat> kind of a, uh, an older style uh, gimbal. You, you see from your books that this was popular maybe 
two, three hundred years ago, kind of this uh, old Gothic Renaissance style. Um, as you enter in, you are greeted to a large, sprawling uh, shopping district in the middle of the city. Um, <clears throat> just a huge bazaar that you can kind of uh, see so many different things being sold. You smell uh, amazing food being cooked and sold. You see and, and you hear blacksmiths uh, working away at their anvils. You can hear uh, criers uh, trying to entice people to, to purchase their wares. Um, and yeah, welcome to Squall's End. Um, I think we should approach on foot versus on upon seeing this carriage. <laughs> no, upon seeing this, Kaim immediately goes back to being himself and think of every movie you've seen where a little town character goes to New York City for the first time and steps off the bus and does that like, you know, 540s spin. That's Kaim. Kaim is... Oh. <laughs> Are you all right, friend? I'm sorry. I just this is incredible. There's so much going on, and I kind of like run to the different directions and like look and try to take in all the sights and the sounds and the smells. Yeah, as you as you walk through, you see um uh, maybe uh, a dozen or so food vendors uh, with meats on sticks, different vegetables, uh, different steamed delights, and they're all beckoning you come forward. Um, Rio, are you raising your hand? Yeah, can we pause just for a second recording? Sure. Uh, yeah, so you see, um, you see and smell uh, multi, uh, maybe a dozen, half dozen uh, food vendors all beckoning you toward. Uh, yeah, sir, uh, come taste uh, the best lizard in all of uh, Zastra. Uh, the other one, no, 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 this one here, and I'll do it for half his price. Uh, just kind of bombarding you with with all these sale pitches. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I will eat both lizards. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think perhaps we should make our way to the port. But they're selling lizards, Gimbal. But just get it on the way. They're on sticks, right? Yeah. I pay both men and, and grab both of my lizards. Okay. Um, you, get, you get maybe uh, you get six from each vendor, um, totaling a gold uh, for everything. Um, the the first one you took, it was a man on the right. He, a uh, half orc gentleman. Um, his is by far better. He's actually using spices and seasoning. The other one is just kind of roasted, almost charred lizard. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, but he does have the better lizard. <laughs> He's, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, as you guys pass through, uh, you see different uh, districts. You see, after leaving the, the food district, um, you see different shops erected for um, metalwork, uh, bow fletching. Uh, you see one uh, kind of uh, spot where a few people uh, are sitting down in front of crystal balls. Um, then you, as you move on, you see kind of a, a more refined uh, gentleman kind of selling his wares uh, and uh, toting to be a, a mage of some kind. Uh, he has a goblet uh, with kind of dancing lights coming in and out, dancing to the other goblet to, to light the, the actual shop. Uh, can I Arcana check to see if that he's real or not. Sure. Me and Kaim are running around. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, that's a 13. Also make a perception. Uh, 18. 18. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the dancing light spell that he's using is legitimate. Um, you see yeah. him... Uh, <laughs> kind of uh, turn his back, uh, go into kind of a darker place in his drawers, and he uses press digitation to light a, a, a candle as he's looking for something. So he seems like a legitimate wizard. I don't have any money for scrolls, but I really want scrolls. Um, well, I should have thought of that before buying a 600 uh, gold piece shirt. <laughs> don't rub it in. <laughs> No, we have to go to the port. We have to go to the port and see how to get home. 
Kimball, do you want one of my lizards? Yes. Here, Which... you have one of the good ones. <laughs> They're really good. <laughs> yeah, and I'm eating the not so good ones. These aren't as good, but filling, you know, like it just <laughs> reminds you of home, kind of, you know? <laughs> um, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Does there, if we're kind of walking towards the lake and and I, I do want to come back and look, but I feel like I have to get a I have to get a way out of here before I go for pleasure. And is is there like anywhere that would be I feel like a ticket booth is a weird thing to have, but I mean is there a ticket no, remember, booth or are there like people selling well, passage or remember we're going for the specific ship captain that um, oh Nicolette. yes yeah sorry I forgot. Yeah you're looking for Everett for, for so long. Yeah. <laughs> um you're looking for Everett, uh, captain of the Bartleby, uh, and he's supposed to give you passage to wherever you need. So yeah, as you're, see if I could find the Bartleby. Yeah, yeah. As you're passing through this uh, sprawling bazaar, uh, you get to eventually uh, some houses, a small residential area, uh, pretty nice, uh, not uh, as uh, not as immaculate or as nice as as you first walked in, uh, but still uh, kind of middle class houses. Um, as you push past that, you get into the actual city, or sorry, the actual docks. And the docks, uh, you see here uh, a large, larger-than-life uh, statue uh, of a, a red dragon with his, his wings in full, um, uh, full flight as he is uh, open mouth and you see fire coming out of his mouth. Um, actual fire keep going, continually going. I immediately uh, put my hand on time and say, it's not real, it's just a statue. <laughs> Thank you. And I go back to looking at stuff. <laughs> looking around everywhere. Um, and you do see people ushering to this building here. Um, any uh, ships that are docked, you see the captains and the crew going to this building first. So you get the idea that this is the, the first stop or um, the ship will manifest, anything like that. Um, the other green X. You Let's might see. be on GM later. This one. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's purple for me. There's no X's. No? Okay. If you zoom in a bit, you might see them. Yeah. Oh, you might be drawing on the GM later, Blair? Oh, I have them. I can see them. I have them. I don't see them. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I see the yeah. ping. So. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you see a line forming see, outside yeah. of this uh, pretty plain kind of solid stone building. I uh, guess I'll get in the queue. Okay. Um, it takes probably the better part of two hours to actually get through the queue and talk to somebody in a little window, um, a little stone window uh, <laughs> on the side of this thing. Um, you see a, a gentleman on the other side, uh, small, diminutive. Uh, what do you need, friend? I'm looking for I, the Bartleby. Oh. The Bartleby? Everett, huh? Um, yeah, he's been here for a while. You can see him on uh, the end of the dock. Uh, what do you need him for? Uh, we Personal carry favor. A okay. Well, we any carry a message from a friend of his up in Sutton. Got it. Got it. Well, he doesn't like uh, listen to rules too much, so I want to let you know if you plan to disembark anytime soon, you'll have to pay the fee through me. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, we'll. I'm not sure if we're going to disembark or not, but I'll make sure that we return if we do. Yeah, I'll know if you don't. So please move along. And he gives you a little, uh, a little slip, um, and it's kind of a, it's a little, pe it's a little stone, um, and on it is a, a tiny rune inscribed. And as you pull your finger over the rune, um, it gives you kind of the, an arrow in the direction uh, that you should be going. Oh, handy. Okay. So you take it through. Um, <laughs> you take it past huge galleys, uh, large sailing ships. Um, you keep walking. Uh, Medium-sized uh, freight carriers, uh, kind of men coming back and forth, uh, unloading and loading. You see um, people in really nice dress paying, uh, you see paying the crewmen to aboard or kind of uh, are 
being flanked by people taking their stuff away from the ship. You keep going. You see smaller fishing vessels, um, just one or two people cruise. Uh, you see nets uh, with the day's catch uh, being hauled off and put into barrels and uh, those barrels being taken to that main um, stone building. You keep going. You see the very end of the dock. One small to medium-sized ship. Um, nothing really around it. He's on the very last uh, dock of this whole bay. Um, and the arrow is pointing directly to that ship. Oh, the little compass stone is clearly broken because Nicolette would not call this a favor, surely. Did you meet her? I think she would call this a favor. Uh, Besides, I've never actually been on a ship for any period of time. This is very exciting. Kaim, can you turn into any, like, giant fish or something? Um... I mean, I, I guess I could. You guys can breathe underwater, too? No. Oh, and well... Even if he could... I don't, I don't know how, I, how that would help, then. I would just get caught by... And then I point to one of the fishing ships, and I, like, shudder at it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll hold up a sign or something. And based on my notes of the journey, he can only transform for uh, four hours at a time, roughly. I don't think that's something that we could manage if we were traveling over the entire, I mean, ocean. I don't know. Isn't it just a giant lake? No, it's, it's an ocean. Oh. Well, I guess we should at least talk to the guy. Maybe he has a secret boat hidden somewhere else. Uh go up to the ship all right uh you see a an older man a long white beard um kind of has a, a black uh really big old aristocratic hat with a feather coming out of it with a gold lining on it um really simple uh brown vest and uh kind of brown trousers sitting back it looks like he's reading a book with a, a pipe hanging out of his mouth Everett? Everett? Uh, yes? Uh, who's out there? Uh, we have been sent by Nicolette to collect a favor. Ah, you guys are a little late here. I was expecting you a few days ago. We ran no. into some unfortunate circumstances on the road. Well, yeah, the fields are treacherous. That happens in the wolf's pine. Uh, well, welcome. This is the Bartleby. I'll be taking you wherever you need to go with reason, within reason. All right, we need to get to Azrin. All right. Um, <laughs> well, Azrin's not on the coast. Not but... the best way to get there. Uh, I suppose I could take you up the river, get you close to the Titan's Gates, and you can travel from there. No, no, no. We don't want to go to the Titan's Gate. We've seen it. It's just some rocks. It's, you know, you could just take us around to one of the port cities in the Saqqaran Empire. Uh, I don't think you understand, friend. He kind of pulls out a map uh, that's next to him. Uh, let me actually share this. I don't think you understand, friend. You see, you see that big white spot there in the, the bottom right? Uh, no one really gets through that. Uh, there, there's one spot, uh, the Arrow Pass, you can go through, but I've never been there myself. All right, we'll just take the arrow past that. So what about here? Uh, well, that goes past the arrow, arrow path, and that arrow path is quite treacherous. And one wrong move, you could be in the middle of that whirlpool. Aren't you a seasoned sailor? Well, yes, but... I I'm would not let's believe that you don't like to follow the rules. I'm so. not a fool, though, son. Well, unfortunately, the men who wish to hire you are... So, arrow pass today. When can we leave? <laughs> well, it's highly irregular, but I, I suppose I can get you close enough to the arrow pass. Uh, uh, say I'd be ready to set sail uh, within the day or so. Oh, I'm sure you can do faster than that. 
Uh, well, we want to make sure we get enough food and stuff for everybody in case we, you know, get stranded and uh, we have right die. Uh, all right. Well, how quick is quick? Do you need to leave? <laughs> I mean, suns are burning. <laughs> I'm looks visibly disappointed. <laughs> um, well, I suppose if you give me maybe three hours, I can get everything prepped and ready to go. All right, we'll wait. I'll need you to help the, me, though. I'll need you to go pick up some supplies, if you will. Oh, also, yeah. the uh, short gentleman at the ticket stand said that we had to pay him to depart? Uh, don't listen to him. Uh, they owe me a few favors, so we could just forget about that. Insight. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen? Eighteen. Um, he thinks he's right. Um, you know that from talking to the person uh, that you need to pay the fine or the fee, um, but he is 100% convinced that it doesn't matter, that you guys don't need to pay a fee. What would happen if one was to not pay a fee normally? Uh, I mean, if he didn't know you a favor. Uh, well, I uh, suppose if you didn't pay a fee, you just have to be uh, not allowed back in Squall's end. But, I mean, they owe me a favor. It's fine. I say we pay the fee. I just want to be sure. No, no, no. Just use that gold to buy supplies. We don't need to pay no damn fee. I don't particularly want to come back to Squall's end, so I'm I'm comfortable with that consequence. Um, shall I we am go not get a our- fan of <laughs> <laughs> we get the supplies? It's a much lovelier city than Sutton, but I'm afraid of the proximity to Sutton. Um, what would you like us to pick up? Uh, well, I guess anything y'all want to eat. Uh, some fresh water would be nice. I have some here, but not for a party of five like yourself. Uh, any uh, gear that you like, and uh, maybe it's a- helpful. One of our one of our member can spend most of the day as a small animal. Okay, I don't know. Are we going to cook him? Because if, if not, no, we still need some food. Water. Oh, I got you. All right, that makes sense. Well, uh, I guess uh, whatever food you want to eat and uh, maybe a little snack for me, whatever you guys uh, pops out to you and thinks that uh, Everett would like, and he kind of puts out his hand and gives you 10 gold. All right, describe this arrow pass to me. You said you're going to drop us off near it, but if we well, don't have a boat to keep going, how are we we'll, going to get through? We'll, we'll play it by ear there, son. If we go up to the arrow pass and find that it's too treacherous, I, I won't uh, subject Bottomley for that nonsense. Uh, arrow pass is, uh, well, it has many, many ships gone awry there. Uh, it's fairly close to the Whirlpool. Uh, if you... If the winds aren't kind to you, they'll push you directly into that son of a bitch and you'll be at the bottom of the ocean uh, before you can breathe. Uh, also, what if we had some way to pull your boat without wind? Would that make the arrow pass safer? I suppose so, but there's no real way to stop the, the waves from pulling you. Um, but what if, if they we control the waves as well? Well, I suppose if you can control the waves and if you can control the wind, then uh, you, my friend, have just revolutionized sailing. All right, Kaim, get on it. (laughs) (laughs) And what do I, what am I getting on? Kaim, let's talk. While we're we're helping (laughs) this gentleman supply his ship, we can talk about what both of us are capable of helping with. Okay, that's probably a good idea. All right, um, he kind of shoes you guys off as he kind of sits back down on his perch, puts his feet up and starts reading his book again. (laughs) Should have asked what the departure fee was. (laughs) Um, Well, oh, uh, speaking of uh, Kaim, I'm not entirely familiar with what um, druids can and can't do, but I, I have some guesses based on what I've seen you do in the past and what I've read. 
Um, do you have a way to purify water? Well, yeah. Yeah, I can, okay. I can create water and I like to, you know, water the plants that way. And it's just kind of peaceful. It's nice. Okay, so we can cross clean water off the list because he can make that work. We probably still have to get food. Um, Should make sure. Know how to create a tidal wave? I can, I can always make a thunderstorm. However, we should, if I, maybe look into receptacles, receptacles for the water. Oh, I, yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea. We can, yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And druids, oh, I, I don't know if I know that or not. Um, Kaim? Yes? Do you always have the same set of spells? I, out of character, I think so. I think we should all just pick them. I don't know how druids work, so. Druids, I think, character. have to pick their spells every day, like clerics do. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was misinformed then. <laughs> so you have the full breadth of spells to choose from. You just have to choose which ones you prepare for the day, right? Is that how it works? This is very, very useful for this sailing deal. I mean, it It sounded like, like Rook wanted to harpoon me. <laughs> I think we can probably get away without something so violent. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have to be a harpoon. Some kind of harness or net or something would work too. <laughs> no, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Rookie might be able to magic us to safety. Oh, I just imagined like a giant, like fish pulling a boat. His people are the masters of the elements. He can create uh, whistling winds and, and, and waves that could knock over a ship or right a ship if they're used to the right direction. It's, oh, then I was right on the money that Kaim is the answer. Yes, Kaim heals all wounds. Um, shall we go okay. ahead and pick up the rations then? <laughs> Everybody take 1d4 psychic damage from that. <laughs> I think I took way more than that. No, it was, a, it was a crit. Take double that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, are, is everyone heading down to get rations or what are we doing? Uh, I'm gonna hang out with Everett. Okay. And just like sunbathe because I'm still exhausted, and moving at half speed. Okay. Um, yeah, as as you stay there and kind of lay on the deck of the ship, he's still just reading his book. Um, he's pipe uh, um, puffing on his pipe uh, every so often. He kind of reaches down and sees if you want any. No, no, thank you. I, uh, I don't smoke. Suit yourself. <laughs> And it just keeps reading. Um, everyone else who's leaving and going to pick up supplies, um, you're able to you find kind of a, 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 a general goods store or a general shop uh, pretty close as to the Gimble, dock. As Gimble goes to leave, I yell out, don't spend $600 on clothes. Never gonna live that down. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like I should come clean. That was mostly for me. Oh, of course not, sweetie. There wasn't a there was a grown gnome present to you know, decide whether the money should be spent or not. But remember the headdress? Yes. That was very expensive. And you were beautiful in it, sweetie. But Gimbal should have known better. You should have known better. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. What did you what did you start, Coulter? <laughs> <laughs> um, do we still we still have all those clothes, don't we? 
Yeah, <laughs> they're still in your pack. <laughs> we can sell whatever of that we don't want. <laughs> Um, as you guys head, head down, you're able to find a general, uh, general goods shop pretty close to the dock area. Um, that's not too packed with people. Um, you're able to find, uh, just regular rations. Uh, you're able to find kind of all of the, uh, would be, uh, equipment that an adventure would need on the, the actual ocean. Um, what are you guys picking out specifically? A barrel. Just a barrel? Okay. Well, what else are we going to put water in when it gets water? Yeah, true, true, true. What I, and I will say you get like maybe uh, four days of rations for the group. Um, Is that roughly what he thought we would need? Yeah. Uh, the trip itself, he hasn't really told you, but you know, just kind of from ship, ship travel that it takes maybe about three days or so to get there. And, and I still have or, five days of rations of my own that I have not used at all. Okay. And you still have, after all of that, maybe seven gold pieces? I want to go to the magic shop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, who's going with Gimbal to the magic shop? I hope someone, yeah. okay. uh, someone that has a rook's best interest in mind to stop culture from spending money. <laughs> we just spent 150 gold. <laughs> I mean, I look at it as he knows that we need this money to find his mother, so if he's spending any, it's his own problem. And in all likeliness, I won't. I just need to see what's there. Uh, yeah, so you're, uh, everyone heads with you to the magic shop. Um, there's no, you, you can are you heading back to the one you saw as you came in? Yeah, uh, yes, with the person okay. who's actually using magic. Okay. Um, the there's, ball there's no outward name for this place. It's kind of a, a smaller tent, uh, set up in, in the middle of, uh, kind of right next to a food stand. And, uh, on the other side is going to be a Bo Fletcher. Um, but yeah, as you kind of walk up, he is, uh, currently stoking, uh, the fire of his candle, making it bigger and bigger to make a show to, to people, um, and kind of making that jump to another candle and then making it change color. Uh, to entice people to come in. Um, I will subtly uh, change the color of the flame. He, you see him kind of concentrating, and then you see a, a small smirk uh, appear on his face as he um, disperses the flame. Ah, so a fellow practitioner of the arts. Um, something like that. So refreshing to find another one. Snap a flame and extinguish it. (laughs) So refreshing to find another one this side of the Titan's Gates. How is that many of ours? Well, not very many of ours. Not ones that are skilled anyways. Um, What do you need? Uh, Please come into my shop. I was uh, primarily curious what um, scrolls or books you might have on hand. No books other than my personal, unfortunately, but uh, a variety of scrolls, some magic items. Uh, please uh, enter and we'll speak about it. I'll go in. Okay. Um, and tries to follow just like happily behind. As you enter this tiny tent, um, you see that it, once you pass the threshold, it expands and it is a large room, uh, two, two stories, kind of uh, stairs going up to the second story with just rows and rows of books. Um, and then on the bottom, you see kind of display cases with a few magic items um, and then uh, a makeshift counter. Uh, and then behind the counter, you see a few scrolls um, kind of displayed uh, as like men users uh, of sorts. Um, oh, anything particular? Yes. Anything particular you're looking for? Uh, I'm sorry, your name? Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's been a very long day. Um, my name is, is Kimball. <laughs> Kimball, uh, very nice to meet you. I am uh, Marvin the Magnificent at your service. 
Um, anything particular you're looking for, Gimbal? Uh, well, we are about to make a rather difficult ocean voyage, and I was curious um, if there were any, um, well, uh, items that you might have that would be useful as far as weather or navigation. Uh, well, if you're on the ocean, you probably want to be able to breathe underwater in case the worst happens. We have a few flasks of water breathing. Um, oh, I can do that already. Oh, fantastic. We have uh, not much for navigation, unfortunately. We have uh, a few small spells that could slightly control the wind, but not enough to push a larger ship. Um, unfortunately, not much else. I, I ran into a druid, uh, and he stored a few spells of goodberry in, in a few of my rings. I don't know if that would be something you're interested in, if it's a longer journey. Uh, well. Oh, uh, yes. What was that? Um, a, few, a few rings of, of what? Uh, of goodberry. I, I turned to Gimbal. I don't know about you, but that sounds wonderful. <laughs> I can actually um, do that. <laughs> can I actually have that cantrip. <laughs> you have Goodberry as a cantrip already? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I forgot well, about it. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. The Magnificent, I, I think we actually are covered on all of these fronts so far. I, I suppose oh. our team was more equipped than I expected. Well, well, that's a good thing, realizing that now. Um, but please, look around and see if there's anything else that tickles your fancy. Um, go ahead and roll a... Go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Okay. Actually, a d12. Roll a d12. Uh, one. Um... You see a few scrolls, uh, one of chromatic orb, one of sleep. Um, you see one of a, kind of a higher level spell of phantasmal killer. Um, you see detect magic, jump, uh, darkness, levitate, um, scrying, telekinesis. Um, then you have uh, bestow, curse, scorching ray, um, and that's uh, all of the, the spell scrolls that you can see. I want all of them! <laughs> um, uh, Are you looking for magic items at all? Sure, yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll a... Go and roll a D100 for me. Uh, 67. Alright, go ahead and roll the D100 again. 46. Um, you see uh, a few things of armor. You see chain plate, breastplate. Um, go ahead and roll again. Uh, 21. Uh, you see uh, a few rings displayed on the actual mantle um, with short descriptions underneath, uh, kind of hovering in um, uh, in illusionary uh, script. Hmm. You see ring of telekinesis, uh, a few rings of spell storing. Um, you see a... Uh, Sorry, give me a second. Sure. Ring, ring of invisibility, uh, ring of spell turning, um, ring of lordly might, uh, a few of these other ones. Uh, how much are the rings of spell storing? Uh, yes, it's a fantastic item. Uh, let's see. Yes, very much so. We have one that we're using presently, but it's been incredibly useful. It wouldn't be bad to get more. Well, since you are a fellow practitioner, and I do respect you, um, I would say something like that would cost in the range of 
45 thousand gold oh, wow. oh, it was that high <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I become darkness. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's excellent to know if we ever need to uh, unhand our own. Uh, yes, uh, they fetch a pretty high price. Uh, very useful little buggers. Uh, anyone can use magic with them. Um, as you well know, um, there are payment plans we could set up. <laughs> While, uh, while that ask conversation him, is happening. Ask him if the payment plan means we get the ring and then we pay him back in installments because we can never speak to him again. <laughs> that can't be it. <laughs> He's been so nice. But, okay, but, but we're, we're criminals in time. <laughs> uh, while that conversation is happening, do I smell or hear or sense any animals in this magical warehouse um you don't smell or hear any animals but you do see um illusionary animals pop up here and there just around the shop um and uh as uh gimbal's talking to the the key shopkeep um you see a, a hawk fly in and land on the shopkeep's shoulder um uh, it registers as an animal um but you get the feeling it's probably familiar Can I? Good. Ah, mighty, mighty fine creature you have there. Oh, thank you very much. He kind of scratches under its beak. Uh, may I ask uh, where where you formed the partnership? Oh, uh, well, I casted my ritual. Your friend here can explain it. And uh, I summoned him from the ethereal plane. I cock my head almost completely sideways and summoned. Gimbal, we have we have a lot to talk about in the boat. Um, I will I will hold an arm out and have Philip come and land. Philip is also from the ethereal plane. Oh yes, an owl. That's a, a great choice. A great eyesight. Yes. Uh, Kaim, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that that was a discussion we had not had before. No, these are these are um, not animals in the traditional sense. But they feel like such real... I have so many questions. And I start taking out my, my book and I'm <laughs> scribbling it. Such writing notes in there. Um, so again, but I also take trade. I don't know if you have anything of worth to me. I think... That's unlikely at present. Rook's oh, fire wow. armor. Fire resistant armor. Rook's wearing <laughs> it. He <laughs> wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Can... Ooh, um, get rid of the witch box. We always say we have the witch because we have the lead box and the witch box, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I, I do have uh, the box of a hag. Oh, that's that quite interesting. interesting cursed but i believe that we've triggered the curse at this point please uh, let me see really safe i'll take the little thorned box out of the bag and, and set it down on the counter you will with a flick of his wrist he summons a, a hand uh that grabs it and brings it close to him hmm yes opens it up oh very interesting so anything inside is shielded from scrying magic and I do see this curse here. That's quite a doozy. Um, I'm hoping this wasn't sprung on you. Uh, obviously uh, not, start, since you're here. I started laughing in the corner. <laughs> I, it was, it was, it was, but we had a, a very uh, powerful healer with us hmm. at the time. And since it's cursed, it might, and he kind of twists the hand to, to see the backside of it, it might fetch a larger cost. What are you asking for it? What is that down? <laughs> 45,000 for this, huh? Tell me the story behind it. Uh, sure. Um, can I can I just roll insight? I'm just real nervous. I'm being very open with this. Sure. Story. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Uh, Nat one. You. Yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> you would intrinsically trust him. He's the first person since you've left, or since you've come to the east of our yeah east of the Titans gates that has been uh, an actual practitioner of magic. <laughs> um. Well, uh, we were um, in a, a town north of here, uh, dealing with the disappearance of several missing children. And, and in that uh, experience, we found that there was a night hag that was to blame for the entire situation. Um, we rescued the children from the night hag, and this box was uh, procured from her uh, lair, for lack of a better term. Um, she has since been banished to her home plane. Um, this was after the curse was triggered. Ah, so you've stolen and banished Iago. Good for you. I had one spat with her a few years ago, a nasty creature, but I would consider giving money for this, maybe just in trade. Um, what are you interested in? That is such a difficult question. Um, I don't suppose that it would fetch enough to get one of these lovely little baubles of a ring. Um, I feel I can't recoup the cost, but for nostalgia's sake, perhaps. Maybe we can strike another deal. What, what items are you interested in? Please give me, give me the full breath of what you like from my shop and we'll see what we can do. I really would love uh, one of the scrolls. Um, <laughs> Which scroll in particular? Uh, I have... Uh, just a moment. <laughs> I'm consulting my own um, book of spells <laughs> that I was like interested in and wanting. <laughs> Do we want to pause it for uh, Rio sure. again? Okay, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta go pee. So are there any particular scrolls that you are interested in? Um, well, if you have a fly, that would not be unuseful. Um, perhaps, let me see what I need here. Going through my own, um, I'm scrolling through my own spell book, trying to figure out like what in the world. Scrolling the world the through this. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a wish list of sorts. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for, uh, let me see here, um, gentle repose, gust of wind, um, fly, as of course I said, um, I'm looking for, uh, let me see here, let me see here, um, gaseous form, um, Wall of fire, wall of water, um, wall, wall of walls. force. Really, any walls would be phenomenal. Um, polymorph. I, I have a few on hand that you've just said. I have a uh, wall of water, obviously, being coastal. Uh, wall of force is also one. Uh, gaseous form. Uh, fly is a staple for any wizard. Uh, those are the, the few of the ones you spoke of that I have on hand. And what would the cost of those be as far as this trade if we uh, oh, won boy. or a combination? Or I know that's it's probably too much to ask for all three of those, but... Oh, well, let me think. Um... If we're looking for all three of those, it could be quite pricey. Um, probably in the few hundred to thousand gold range for the for the for the lots, uh, including the the ring of spells storing. Uh, any any other magic items tickling anyone else's fancy? As he looks towards everyone else, time kind of pokes up and goes. Do you, I really like my bow and arrow. Do you, do you have any special arrows? Um, well, I have an arrow of return. Uh, once you shoot it, uh, it comes back to the bow itself. Um, I have, uh, 
an arrow of wild growth, uh, shooting it into uh, anywhere will uh, create uh, plant life of your choosing. Um, I have uh, a few arrows of true shots. Uh, some of these other like any any interest to you? The wild growth. We'll get to true shot, but the wild growth sounds incredible. All right. I have a scroll of Tensor's floating disc that I can add to our side of the trade. Oh, I just sold the last of that, so that would be fantastic. That's very popular around here with all of the pushing and pooling of merchandise to and from ships, so that could fetch a good price. What about you, Uh, young lady? uh, I kind of walk up and I start pulling off my glove. And I go, do you have any information on how to kill the demon that did this? Oh. And I show in my hand. <laughs> Interesting. M- may I? He kind of pulls it closer with his actual hands, um, traces over the runes. I've only seen this once before in my life. Uh, further gone than this. It it seems as though these symbols, these two hash marks you have, are a countdown of sorts of this entity, this being taking hold. Uh, It seems here that you might have four more until the actual hold is is made. Um, I don't have much information about it, but it is distinctly infernal. It is not anything of the nine hells. It is, in fact, of the abyss, I would say. Um, And the very small amount of time I spent with the other individual that had this symbol was not very pleasant. So I unfortunately don't have much to help you. Uh, I, I will only say slowing the progression is the important part. If you give this creature any more influence on your body, it it may be unpleasant. Will it hurt? Uh, Hurt? Perhaps not, but this is its portal to our plane. So the the more influence it has on you, the greater chance it has of coming to this plane. So to you, it might not be anything bad. It might actually be quite pleasurable. He is offering power, I assume. And for many, power is a lot. But in the end, this could come to summon this creature to our plane. So... Be wise about it. I didn't know how many more favors I had. I appreciate your help. Of course. You are a very interesting group. I enjoy very much your stories. And you took out Yago by yourselves with their army they are creating. Please tell, tell me more stories. Perhaps my prices will drop a bit more. Well, there is an item that we have that is not for trade, but is here, um, a few. Um, We also took a uh, ring from Yago that has a very powerful spell stored in it. Um, But that, of course, is a story that you've already mostly heard. Um, But we also have, and I'll take um, the devil coin out of the the lead box, This from a deal that was made with uh, an infernal being in Osrin. Yes, a devil's calling card is what its go-to name is. Uh, That will 100% summon the demon in question to you. Um, Back in the box and close it. (laughs) Again, coming with great power, much like... um, uh, the young misses, uh, but also you're making a, a pledge of your soul. So in dire straits, I, I can't deny that I myself have partaken in one or two maybe, 
but be ready for the consequences. We took down about, I want to say, 15 of his hellhounds in the process of that interaction. But... So you have some experience with the devils then? Um, uh, some. Not. Yeah. It wasn't really intentional, but that mm-hmm. was how we ended up, yes. And that we didn't make phenomenal. any deals with him, but we have the coin, as you said, just in case. Mm. And what, may I ask, brought on these hellhounds if you have not made a deal yet? Uh, somebody else had made a deal with him that tried to um, renege on the situation, and unfortunately we were not able to um, complete their protection. But Well, God's, God's bless his soul. Well... You know firsthand, I, I assume, what happens if deals like this come to fruition. So, uh, again, uh, I would not fault anyone for seeking power, as my I myself am a practitioner of the art of seeking power in knowledge, but do it responsibly. I think the last of our stories that we maybe haven't shared is that we are in search of a lost soul to return it to its body. We had, Alas, so we, I had a, a dear loved one who was um, eviscerated by a, uh, by a devil, and we were able to uh, save the body that the soul had already departed, and we have been uh, in search of a way to regain it ever since. Time looks at Gimbal flips backwards a few pages and starts writing on a separate page. Page like titled Gimbal and then he starts writing on it. (laughs) That is very unfortunate indeed and I'm sorry for your loss. The soul of this loved one is unretrievable then. Um, Well, that is the current thought, but we are uh, seeking the knowledge in order to retrieve it. If there is a way in existence, we well, are seeking the source of it. If there was a deal struck, there's not many things on this plane that I know of that can break that deal and, and bring that person back. Uh, unfortunately, I, I apologize for the somber tone. Um, you think that there was a, a deal that was made with the soul? Oh, yes. Uh, there's no... There's laws, you see, that all devils or all demons need to adhere to. And if this was, in fact, a a, a demon, uh, there's no rightful way that he can keep a soul without having a deal struck. What, is there any way that you know of to find what the deal was? Uh, Unless either of the two parties relinquish that information, there's not. We are presently seeking a great wielder of the arts um, in the north to see if there's perhaps knowledge that has not been lent to the general populace of practitioners. I wish you well. I, I know of no such being that has this power, but... I hope you find it for whoever this person is sake. Uh, remember, though, that the transition from being captive as a soul back into the material plane is a messy one. So don't expect the person that is brought back to be the same as that left. Well, one can wish. And you, stoic one in the corner, anything catch your fancy or any stories to divulge? Mm. I have a clone. You have a clone. <laughs> All right. What's what's it called, Gimbal? Uh, it's uh, simulacrum. You have a simulacrum. Yeah. So, well, a full simulacrum. He is also a practitioner, then. No. no. Oh. I was, it was kidnapped and tortured, and they created a blah 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 of me. Simulacrum. And captured by one of these 
demons. Oh, I'm sorry. By the thing. Oh. Well, it appears your little group has a full house uh, of <laughs> things uh, affecting it. Um, I don't know much about the Fae. Don't really care to. They are beings of chaos and destruction. And oh, I know. I don't wish to go there. Um, no. Nope. Anything catch your fancy in my shop? Um, do you have like a cloak of resistance or like some plus armor? Um, you can find uh, a few studded leather plus one plus two armors. I mean, okay, plus two is a dream. Okay, can I get a bracelet of increased save DCs? <laughs> resistance, uh, a curse bracelet, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for your stories. Thank you for your inquiries into my shop. Uh, I will take this, and he holds up the the curse box with his mage hand. Um, I'll take the the scroll. Any additional items to trade? I do have... have, We may need these. I do have vials of darkness and potions of sleep, but I am a little weary to part with them at present. Uh, potions of sleep wouldn't do much vials of darkness might be interesting if you are willing to part dream you are capable of darkness correct oh uh, no I don't have that one okay well um, I think that that's fair we can give those up as well alright let's see so Taking that away, taking your stories, I will say, if you do me one favor, I will give you everything you are seeking at a much discounted rate of 500 gold. What is the favor? He kind of pulls out a letter. I'd like you to deliver us to uh, Ashar. Um, The... Archmage of Necromancy is expecting it and deliver it and say it's from Marvin the Magnificent and that is it. Well, that is a phenomenal deal. We were already heading to the north. Ashar is not a bad stop on the way. Fantastic. A deal is struck. Do we have 500 gold? Time kind of pops up and he's like, so how long is 500 gold? (laughs) (laughs) That's interesting, little one. I don't understand. I would pull Kaima to the side and like grab a rock off the ground and like try to like explain the intricacies of like (laughs) what a currency system is. (laughs) Trying to explain economy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So Um, you have that. I have this. This equals that. And I kind of, but why why this? And I just kind of drop the rocks. But if I do something for you, you do something for me. And then if I if you need water, I provide water, and then you come help guide my crops. Right. <laughs> this is a why the and I pick the rocks back up. Why these? Because if I don't want to do the work, but these are worth something. Like these rocks might tell someone else that they someone else might owe me a favor and that's a symbol that's a symbol of them owing me a favor i i look at the rocks so what are these worth well if you count them you'll know what they're worth (laughs) marvin (laughs) out of curiosity (laughs) what's the itemized list of what we were taking so you're getting one ring of spell storing um you're getting your three uh, scrolls. So I think it was the two walls of water and the gaseous form. Or maybe one wall of water, water fly. Would fly. Yep, those three. Okay. Um, the uh, arrow of growth. Um, and we'll say a half plate of, or a studded leather plus two. Yeah. Um, um. 
I don't want to keep haggling, but can I give up one of the spells to lower the price? Because I feel weird spending any money. <laughs> uh, seeing the, the price of everything I'm giving, I think 500 gold is uh, a bargain, more than a bargain on your end, even if you leave one of the spells behind. Okay, 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 great. Yes, thank you. And Dream, you didn't really ask for anything. Did you want? I mean, I, I mean, I already got that spell sorting okay. the ring ring, and I feel pretty good about that. I, I don't know all the items like you guys, so I mean, I'm still happy that I have the ring from the hat. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I'll say you also get the the arrow of returning, so you won't need kind of additional arrows. Um, Fantastic, and the deal is struck. Please, uh, if you're in town for very long, come visit me again. Uh, I always appreciate a good story here on the material plane. And uh, any other time, of course. Yes. Uh, Any other questions for me before you leave? Um, I take it we're not to open the letter? I would prefer you not. I just wanted to confirm. Phenomenal. Well, uh, have a good day, you all, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. As he takes 500 gold from you. <laughs> oh, Rick's not going to be happy. Oh, okay, but I figure I can just spell the ring. I can sell the ring of spell storing if we need more money down the line. It'll just be like a temporary. I got it, but then mm-hmm. like, it's it's a it's a loan. It's a, I mean, they're worth a lot of money, so they're worth a lot, a lot of money. But I can get the money back down the line. Yeah, it scares me that this dude gave us that good of a deal. He gave us a forty thousand gold. Yeah, <laughs> plus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of scratch, not scratching, but like rubbing the end of the feather against my head. I'm like, well, if I'm. If I'm understanding this correctly, we only paid 493 gold because of, I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I just pat Kaim on the shoulder and keep walking. I am super excited to have wall of water for this <laughs> travel. <laughs> Uh, I can become darkness as an eldritch invocation, but I can't, I don't have like a spell to cast. Oh, that's okay. That still works great. (laughs) Um, And at this point, uh, as you guys head out of the shop and head towards the the ship, that's where we're going to end tonight. Uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. uh, And we will catch you next time. And we will come up with a tagline eventually. 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 (laughs) Eventually.